Hello, I'm Michelle Orleski, and I am a keeper assistant here at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, and I'm going to introduce you here to our lovely naked mole rats. We have two colonies. If you want to look at them a little bit, we've got a lower colony down here of 31 naked mole rats, and we have a colony up top. All the chambers are up on the shelves, and there's seven naked mole rats up there. We do keep them separate. They are extremely territorial animals, so they don't smell like each other, and we don't want anything to happen to them. With these guys, we do say they are naked, but they're not fully naked. To be a mammal, you do have to have hair, and they do have hair. They have them in the, in the form of whiskers all throughout their body. Um, about 100 hair each. I personally have not recounted them. Um, they are used just like a cat whisker, which means they can feel the width of tunnels as they're digging them, or they can feel each other, um, and also uh, like they can sense food and stuff like that too, of course, with their smell, and then the whiskers help them realize how big the piece is. Um, with that, we do have a queen. These guys are a queen colony, um, just like ants and uh, different other insects. So we do have one queen, and the rest are workers and or uh, soldiers. So they do, like I said, they are territorial. So soldiers do fight off any uh, <clears throat> enemy or other like intrusive naked mole rat colonies if they wanted to come in. And then the, the uh, wor or workers actually just take care of the queen. Normally the queen just stays when she's pregnant and has gives birth to pups. She does stay in what they call a nursery chamber and then the workers actually bring her the food and take care of her and help take care of the pups. When we do have a pregnant queen in here, the gestation is about 74 days. Um, so in about 20, anywhere from 12 to 25 pups can be born, if you can believe the size of these guys. Those pups are super, super tiny. Uh, so yeah, it's actually quite amazing to see. As you guys can also see, um, as far as their diet is concerned, which we just fed them, is all gonna be root vegetables because they are located underground. So we feed them yams, carrots, potatoes, a little bit of lettuce, sometimes tomatoes, which I realize is above ground, but <laughs> tomatoes are good for them, beets, rutabaga, anything like that, and they do love their vegetables. Also, if you look around, you notice there's really not a water source for them. The reason why is that underground, they wouldn't have any kind of water source, so what they do is get their water from their diet itself. So that's really important for us to cut them into these big pieces, as you see, you may think they're too big for them, but it's not. If they're cut any smaller, they would actually, uh, dehydrate like the dry out the vegetables would dry out as you saw that little guy right there was struggling a little bit to get into the tube it's fine it's natural for them uh, obviously you may think the ground is nice and textured but it's not they may slip and slide in the ground too they are just as fast forward as they are backwards so you can't <laughs> you can't try to outrace them either way they are really quick and there is no what I call manners involved usually with these guys. And what I mean by that is you'll just see right there, they walk right on over each other. They don't say, excuse me, pardon me, anything like that. They just walk over and the next one will probably do it too. Kind of like a leapfrog, but make a mole rat wise. Okay, so if you want to, I will uh, let you go ahead and enjoy our naked mole rats. We're going to give you a little bit of zen time. You will be able to hear them a little bit. That little high-pitched chirping sound is them. Enjoy your time with the naked mole rats.